Hello everyone, my name is Anthony. I've been putting this video off because I'm scared of the reaction I'm going to get to this. Well, I'm mostly afraid of the overstatements, lies, and personal attacks that'll be directed towards me. But also there are people in crypto who I've respected for a long time, who I will lose respect for when they respond to this video. And there are also people who I've hoped would respect me one day who will no longer respect me after speaking about this. So speaking about this has the potential to change a lot for me, but I know I have to be strong and talk about this because there are people who will, will be helpful too. Before I get started, I need to ask you guys something. I try not to ask for anything from you guys too much other than to subscribe and follow me and, and all that stuff. But in this situation, what I'm asking for is extremely important. This video is about a very touchy subject and has a good chance of getting a lot of hate and downvotes and being removed from subreddits and such. Uh, therefore, no one will see this video because the opposition, I guess you call it, would call it, don't want anyone to see this. After watching this video, if you agree with what I've said here or have been affected by anything like this, can you please upvote it? So at all the links that I'll leave in the comment section below, and uh, also, if you have the courage to talk about anything and speak up from your own experiences as well, uh, that would be great. Uh, so hopefully this video will get noticed and other people will see it and this whole issue and topic and everything. Thank you in advance, and now I'll begin with what I have to say. So I do see it as society's job to point out hypocrisies and unfairnesses, to say enough is enough using strong counter arguments and reasoning to help regulate movements and people to keep them from getting out of hand and causing more harm than the good they initially sought. I do believe those actions are how we achieve equality. And I also believe that equality is a constant battle because of the inherent blindness and self-serving motives inside of all of us. So in the spirit of that belief, like always, I do encourage comments and criticism and judgment directed towards me and my thoughts and views expressed in this video and all of my other videos. Uh, that's why I make everything I do public. As long as they're backed by strong arguments, organized counter arguments and reasoning, and not personal attacks and diversions uh, against me. That's what I always strive to do and practice and I encourage others to do, so it's only fair that I have it uh, directed towards me as well or whatever, you get the idea. And in the land of cryptocurrency, strong reasoning of concerns is what keeps us from knowingly implementing detrimental, untested code. And strong counter arguments based on past outcomes is what prevents us from repeating mistakes and striving for something better. So I think we can all agree that speaking, arguing, debating is how we come to solutions on problems and uh, give other people voices and, and all that. So debating, arguing fairly, and staying on topic instead of retaliating with personal attacks and diversion arguments is good for society as whole. It also encourages people to speak and be heard instead of bullied, ostracized, remain silent, or to fight back with force. In my mind, this is a fair and peaceful approach to all this. That being said, uh, let's get into what provoked this video. So I guess it's a couple weeks ago now, I saw uh, someone that I followed on Twitter retweeted this tweet by Maria Paula Fernandez. I'm not sure who retweeted it, and it's been deleted since, so I can't find out. And I had no idea who Maria is or was before any of this, and even right now, I may still not know her entirely. But from what I could tell from that one tweet and a couple others I saw before she blocked me, as well as looking at her LinkedIn profile after the fact. She claims to promote openness and diversity in blockchain and support women and minority groups in blockchain as well. She also works for Golem and F Berlin as a community recruiter and organizer, giving support and organizing communities around Ethereum. Mostly the communities and support she organizes uh, tend to be towards women and minorities. Anyway, I retweeted her tweet to criticize her comments saying that she and other Ethereum minority support programs do not encourage openness and diversity, but instead only support groups that they side with, and that this is detrimental to freedom because it manipulates outcomes by giving unfair advantages. 
In a previous video that I published, I spoke about how there are zero white male only blockchain scholarship programs, yet there are many scholarships tailored to female and minority only groups. Of course, there are general blockchain scholarships that white men can participate in, but they would be in competition with females and minorities as well who have their own dedicated scholarships and uh, yeah, they can participate in them as well. And also those general scholarships still promote and encourage diversity inside of them as well. And I'm not sure if they have quotas or not, but I'm sure that they cannot just give all their funding to white males out of fear of criticism of being called prejudiced towards white men and sexist and racist. Uh, people are afraid of backlash for being called sexist and racist. Uh, just look at uh, the incident with Starbucks not too long ago where they bent over backwards when they were accused of being racist for kicking out two noisy loiterers. So every now and then these scholarship programs need to give to minorities as well, despite if maybe a white male was a better candidate for the funding. And this is the same line of thinking for uh, diversity leaning hiring practices as well. Also, it's important to point out, and I forget the exact numbers, uh, I brought it up in my previous video, but there's something like three to four more times uh, of funding and money available specifically to females for blockchain scholarships than there is available to uh, general blockchain specific scholarships. I think if we do want to point out systemic sexism and racism, this definitely seems like a good argument that it in fact does exist in the blockchain space but not as everyone sees it. And this is concerning because if programs like this continue as they are, we'll see a significant decline in values that built Western civilization and technology and, and societies as a whole. And those values are things like work harder and be smarter and work better than the next guy if you wanna succeed. Uh, they'll no longer be productive values if people are held back due to quotas and fear of criticism for the sake of diversity. They'll either give up or instead uh, they'll use uh, the initiation of force and violence uh, as that is what increasingly proves a valid strategy to combat inequality and to get ahead. And this is what will bring the fall of competition because it's force and nepotism and stuff like that that gets you the job, not worth work ethics and qualifications. And anyone in the tech space knows that competition is what brings better products and services and better employees. So again, because of this, this is concerning to me. At first glance, the solution to the scholarship problem may be to have white male only scholarships. And after my first video about this, I thought about starting one myself, knowing full well that I'll be called racist for doing so. But I really haven't moved forward with it because I'm just one person, I have a lot on my plate, and I don't have time or knowledge to set up, promote, and maintain something like that. And I don't know anyone who could do it for me. Or another solution may be to get rid of all minority specific scholarships altogether, which again will make promoters of this idea be called racist and sexist and be classified with other negative connotations. Even though all they're trying to do is maintain fairness and get the best employees and, and give the money to the people who deserve it the most. These support programs and specialized scholarships also go against free markets. So it's hard for me to believe anyone pushing for them really believes in the core values of blockchain and all that stuff. But instead, they believe in the values when it's beneficial to them and their agendas. Anyway, I could go on and I probably will later in this video, but I do want to take the time and the majority of this video to focus on the hypocrisy of Maria specifically, as that's what sparked this video. And since I was blocked, even though I'm pretty sure that I didn't attack her personally, I was nice, and uh, I think I did like okay with trying to remain on topic and all that. Uh, Anyway, I was blocked and I'd like to give myself a bit of time to defend myself in my own words, explain myself, and give my counter arguments to hers. As Maria is both employed and politically aligned with the position that promotes females and minorities in cryptocurrency, I am taking her thoughts and actions and words to speak on be behalf of women in blockchain movement as a whole. And that being a woman in blockchain herself, I believe she should hold herself to a standard and act in a way which encourages the acceptance of it. That her character and actions speak to reassure everyone that her pushing for more minorities and diversity in blockchain is good for everyone and everything as a whole. 
and she is therefore to be trusted. So let's take a look at the things that she said to me on Twitter. First, the reply to my retweet, she says, man, you don't even make sense. So if she truly believes in diversity in blockchain, she needs to accept that people have different beliefs and values than her, that not everyone will be on the same page, and that she should uh, equally fight for fairness for everyone and not just the groups that she supports and aligns with. Not only do I find her comment to be extremely rude towards me, but it clearly shows that she does not care about other people's thoughts because if she did, she would ask me to clarify my thoughts instead of aggressively shutting me out. This behavior of hers is evidenced by every other tweet she's made to me. Speaking to standing for openness and diversity in blockchain and not caring who you are, she said, correction, we don't care unless you are a bigot, then you're not welcome here. Well, gee, thanks Maria for automatically calling me a bigot without listening or understanding anything that I'm coming from, any place I'm coming from, and I'm really coming from a place of fairness and equality for everyone here. I'm sure anyone who dates her will have a marvelous time of being her partner and making decisions together when she treats differing views and values to her so harshly. I'm not saying that to put her down, but hopefully to help her because relationships are about listening and compromise and you can't shut your partner out and expect them to remain happy and remain wanting to be with you. If she's doing this stuff in public, on Twitter, it's scary to think how she might treat people behind closed doors. Rejecting someone's thoughts without letting them speak is no fun, stifling, and abusive. Depending on that person, it may make them give up if they are met with hostility for expressing any idea that they may have. What if Satoshi didn't have the courage to release Bitcoin due to fear of criticism and ostracism for his ideas? I think we can all agree that that would be tragic to him and to the world as a whole. Satoshi releasing Bitcoin gave so many people uh, and income and jobs and a future and and all that. So anyway, in response to my tweet, she retweets it and says, can someone explain to me what he means? Which again is pretty rude that she doesn't ask me directly for my thoughts. If she truly cared about openness and diversity of ideas, she would have cared to ask me directly about my thoughts. Next, someone asks, he hates diversity? And Maria responds by putting words in my mouth and building a straw man argument against me, saying he believes us, the minorities, have more privileges and that we are taking them away from the major majority, white men, as he points out, because that's exactly it. Minorities, not white men in suits, have ruined it for everyone, totally. First, it's going to be impossible to gain respect in the tech and financial industry if she believes that white men in suits have ruined it for everyone because the financial industry is filled with people like that. You can't make these arguments without expecting a backlash or people defending themselves. People who have worked hard for their position and constantly prove themselves to be capable of their jobs, which is proven by the constant competition and new ideas being explored and built in blockchain and financial space. Maybe that's where all this support for diversity comes from in her. Maybe she doesn't believe she's good enough to stand on her own, so she recruits minorities to incentivize them to fight for and support her. If I give you a job and support you, you are now incentivized to support me, you're obligated to support me, and I have power over you. It's this trading of support for support and having power over people that I believe uh, incentivizes her actions to build a community of people that support her. Next, I never said any of that stuff that she said, and I'll get to my tweets in a minute. I'm just going in order of uh, how I screenshotted them. My thoughts from my own mouth are that yes, minorities do have more support in relation to scholarship funding and support within the blockchain space, which was the argument I made from the get-go, yet she turned it into something completely different about me being against minorities. I'm not against minorities, I'm for a level playing field so that the best people get the job and get hired and get scholarships and all that, the people who work hardest for it. And I also believe that people who receive so much support do not need to work so hard to get a position at work or school if they are competing in minority specific pools. This goes against free and open markets. So, so anyway, the quality of work they achieve and strive for will be innately less because it's not needed for them to survive. I also think there is a better and more realistic argument for why there are more men in crypto than women and that it doesn't involve men actively oppressing women due to their sexism. Okay, next is a screenshot of uh, my tweets I replied to her with which say exactly what I just said. 
So next, Nick Johnson uh, joins in, who is someone I once respected, yet because he decided to build a straw man argument against me and argue a totally different topic, I kind of lost a bit of respect from there, which is unfortunate. What's worse is that Maria responds calling in other people saying that she offered me free blockchain courses. I don't get why everyone has to divert the point that I made with straw men and false characterizations and diversion arguments and all that. Again, all I stated was the fact that there is more support for women and minorities in blockchain than there is for men. That the support is, by definition, systemic uh, sexism and racism, and that it goes against the belief in and spirit of free and open markets. Anyway, she never offered me free courses, so she's getting kind of loony and making up stuff now. But it's also another argument that has nothing to do with anything I brought up. I never complained that I don't have access to anything. Anyone who has followed cryptocurrency knows that everything about how blockchains work is available online. All the work is done in the public, at least for the good blockchains that document everything and are public and open about their ideas and implementations. There are so many open discussions that facilitate the design protocols in the space for each product, with each for each project, with details explaining them on GitHub and various blogs and, and social media and all that. As well as there are so many conferences and lectures available on YouTube with devs explaining how their implementations work in great detail. Also, there's a decent amount of books available explaining complex blockchain protocols and economic theory and all that as well. For someone who really wants to learn, there is no shortage of ways that they can teach themselves. And I know this firsthand because I didn't graduate high school and taught myself everything I know using the methods I've mentioned. Everything I ever learned has been from online documentation, independently testing software and following projects and events closely. And as Cassius points out in this tweet, I have enough knowledge of blockchain protocols to have made my own educational videos about them in the past, as well as advise and educate countless people on how blockchains work. As you can tell from my older videos, the original intent of this YouTube channel was to educate people on technical protocols in blockchain, but I've moved away from that as the videos I made didn't receive as much support as I hoped for, and for various other reasons that have pushed me away from the blockchain space. So my argument clearly was never that I don't have access to information to learn, but again, my problem was with the disproportional funding and support to minorities and the hypocrisy that Maria truly encourages diversity and freedom of ideas by pushing these things, which I've shown she clearly does not. So then this person chimes in saying, I'm just here to teach. How did I get entangled in this nonsensical thread? Please let this be about teaching and move fights elsewhere. Which again is another diversion argument. I don't know, maybe she just didn't read any of the tweets or anything I said, but teaching and whatever has nothing to do with what I brought up. And again, Maria replies with another straw man argument saying that I'm sad that I couldn't get any courses. I hope you're noticing a pattern here of her making stuff up, which I will continue to show throughout this video, because I really do not understand how the behavior she exhibits is encouraged by and people in society actually enable her to speak like this to other people. But anyway, I'm only gonna go through and talk about a few more tweets for the sake of not beating a dead horse with a bush or whatever that expression is but I will put all the tweets at the end of uh, this video on screen uh, for the sake of full disclosure and openness and all that stuff. This next tweet now shows Maria is accusing Cassius of tagging people and annoying them, which clearly Maria is the one who uh, tagged them in, in the tweet. So that's another example of her just making up nonsense. And here's a screenshot of me actually talking uh, to Maria before I was blocked. I tried explaining my thoughts and she shut me out and turned it into me having white privileges and white resentment. Which again, I didn't graduate high school and taught myself everything that I know using what's available to me free on the internet. I live alone and I don't have any family and the only community support I get is from this YouTube channel and my social media accounts, which I don't even care about. I'll continue on if I don't have any support or anything like that, support isn't what's holding me back. I actually think my lack of support is a good thing for me because it forces me to work harder to succeed. And I had to learn more and be better than all the rest of the people uh, 
who did have formal education and support. I would not be the person I am today if I had someone holding my hand and offering me easy ways out. This next tweet, I posted a video explaining something since there is no way I could do all of it via tweets and she didn't care to watch the video and instead dismisses it as more bigotry. Again, this is coming from someone who's supposed to be promoting diversity and openness of thought in blockchain, yet she refuses to look at other people's arguments and ideas. In this tweet, Yuri asks if there are scholarships for disadvantaged families. I don't think I responded, so I'm going to respond now. I'm sure there are general scholarships for disadvantaged children, but I haven't seen any blockchain-specific ones, but I'm just going to ignore that and not make that argument. Instead, I'm going to argue about middle and upper class white men who are denied jobs and scholarships in favor of di promoting diversity. Even if there were scholarships for disadvantaged people, I doubt that that qualifies them as being disadvantaged. And in this tweet, Maria is saying, they crushed us first, referencing white men in suits. So it clear, it's clear that there's some revenge mentality driving her actions, which maybe is fine. I don't know. Revenge can be a good motivator as long as you keep your head clear with it and don't use it to harm other people. Which, as I've stated, shutting people out, manipulating conversations, using straw man arguments against people, and all that is clearly harming free speech and free markets and the psyche of people. Now in this tweet, she goes on making a fake apology as a way to diminish and twist my thoughts and gather sympathy for herself. Obviously, if she was truly sorry, she wouldn't continue her actions as is. And as for her calling me a victim, I actually do think I'm a victim. Well, a victim to her in this conversation, at least, in that she personally attacks me with lies and false accusations and false characterizations to get people on her side and shut me out of uh, speaking. So that's why I'm talking about this, and I don't think it's wrong to speak up when things like this happen. If I wasn't as mentally strong and as aware as I am today, it would and has been in the past a form of some really bad mental abuse to do what she's doing here to people. Like, if she were to treat children this way, or other people who actually depend on her and have no choice other than for her to lead, care for, and protect them, what she's doing will really screw them up psychologically and they may never break free of it. I don't know the specific term, maybe it's gaslighting or something like that, but again, it's clearly abusive, controlling, manipulative, and oppressing. But anyway, like I said previously, I'm not a victim of any of the stuff I was arguing, so I don't know why she keeps calling me a victim. I never tried to get a scholarship before or get any formal education and never applied for any blockchain jobs before. I'm 32 now and well off enough uh, from doing my own thing that I've never had a need for that uh, in the past and I'll never have a need for it any time in the foreseeable future. That's kind of why I can speak the way I do because I don't need to kiss anyone's ass to get a job or make a name for myself. So in this tweet, she argues that F Berlin gave 70% of its subsidies to white men. So therefore they must clearly not be prejudiced against white men but she never really explained why that was or doesn't even understand why that is. I'm sure it could be explained by the fact that 91.5% of people investing in crypto are male, uh, according to this eToro study done in 2018. Or maybe this coin.dance summary updated last week showing exactly the same numbers. I think if there wasn't favoritism against white males, Eth Berlin would have actually a much higher percentage of funding given to them. Anyway, moving on from these tweets, here's a study done showing that countries who took legal actions and created programs to promote diversity actually ended up with way less diverse societies uh, than the countries who haven't done that. I'm not going to go into this study in this video, but I'll leave the link in the description and you can check it out for yourself. Next, I do believe diversity leads to more arguments and oppression, uh, people being silenced, and a fear of them being able to speak out. This is because the more diverse a group, the more different opinions and values there will be. It creates an environment where people that use the most force are the ones that get heard. Because of this, I don't believe segregation is bad. I tried googling arguments about why it is bad, and I couldn't find anything other than that it concentrates poverty and lowers uh, house values. Which, I mean, poverty is relative, so I don't really think that's a great argument. But if you know any uh, arguments for why segregation is bad, uh, leave it in the comments below. I'm, I'm, I'm an open person. I'm, I listen to arguments and everything. So uh, yeah, let me know down below. And I don't think Maria thinks segregation is bad either. If she blocked me for having different thoughts than hers and her group, uh, 
then she clearly thinks segregating my thoughts for her group is uh, a good idea. I do think there will be less arguments and fights if uh, we were surrounded by people with the same, uh, that were the same as us and worked together because of our similar values. I mean, that's how Bitcoin grew so fast. Everyone was on the same page, saw the same problems, and had the same values. But who knows, maybe segregation will have negative effects that no one knows about or has thought about before. So maybe it's better to have delegated segregation or goal-based segregation, where people just work on, uh, work on and focus on the tasks at hand, and they don't talk about anything else and keep their other thoughts and ideas out of it. I don't know, that's just some of my thoughts, but this is kind of getting off topic for the scope of this, this video. I'm going to show you the rest of the tweets now and then end this video. If you would like clarifications on my thoughts or tell me why I'm wrong or I'm not seeing things clearly, please leave a comment below. Also, please remember to like this video and upvote the subreddit links that I'm going to leave in the comment section below as I think this needs more exposure. And uh, please also subscribe and follow me on all social media if you'd like to support me. You can also donate Bitcoin and Ethereum to the addresses both on screen and in the video description. So that's it. Take care. Thank you and goodbye.